Hello National 5 Historians and welcome to week number 7 where we are looking at the Christmas truce. Now, the Christmas truce is linked to what we've been looking at in National 5 history in terms of life and conditions in the trenches. Now, the Christmas truce is where both German and British soldiers stopped fighting each other and actually met each other on no man's land. So you have a picture here which says, why is this one of the greatest headers in the world? Well, this is actually a match between German and British troops which took place during the Christmas truce. Now, the Christmas truce started on Christmas Eve in 1914 and lasted into Christmas Day on 1914. So what we are studying today, we are looking at as I mentioned, the 1914 Christmas truce. Now, a truce is ultimately where both sides decide to start fighting each other and ultimately, in this case, they meet each other and have some peaceful gatherings. Now, a question there, do you think this was unusual? This Christmas truce was unusual because also during the war both sides are meant to be fighting against each other, so to stop fighting was unusual. Now, can you tell who's on the left and who's on the right of this picture? Well, this picture is actually taken from an Arvel, which we're going to be looking at in a moment. But on the left-hand side is the British soldiers, and on the right-hand side is a German soldier. So what we're aiming to do today, today we learn about the Christmas truce of 1914. So your aims by the end of this lesson are, firstly, to describe the events of the Christmas truce of 1914. So I've given you a wee bit of information already about the fact that it started on Christmas Eve and went into Christmas Day of 1914, where both the British and the Germans stopped fighting each other and met on no man's land. We're also looking to analyse how soldiers involved in the Christmas truce would have felt and to be able to make a judgement about the appropriateness of a source. Now, just a quick recap. Remember, from what we know already, most people expect it to be a short war, World War One, and that it would be finished by Christmas time. They, unfortunately, were wrong about this. The war would last another four years and would result in the death of millions of people. Now, what you have here is an advert from the supermarket Sainsbury's that they used as their Christmas advert. Now, what I'd like you to do is to pause the video here and to watch this advert very carefully. And while the advert's on, try and write down what you see happening because it's important that you write down what you see happening because this is going to lead into our next task. Now, to access a, this advert, you have it via Teams or there's a YouTube link that's been posted on your instructions in Teams for you to watch the advert as well. So if you pause the video just at this point to watch the advert. Okay, so you should now have notes on the advert in terms of what you see and how that shows the Christmas truce. Now the question here is saying, is this advert in any way controversial? Well, you'll see here this clip from The Guardian which says, Sainsbury's Christmas ad is a dangerous and disrespectful masterpiece by Ali Fogg. So ultimately he is very much against this advert for what it shows, but more on that later on. So why might the advert be seen as controversial? Well you're going to see if the advert appears accurate. Ultimately, is it telling the truth about what happened during the truce? Now, the accuracy of a source's content makes it useful. Just think when we're answering a usefulness question, when we speak about what's in the source, you obviously say it's useful because it's accurate. Now, what you're going to do is to use the following template to make notes on the sources provided that are going to tell you a bit more about the Christmas truce. And once we've looked at the sources that tell you a bit more about the Christmas truce, we're going to compare these to the notes you had from the advert. So in your jotters or on a piece of paper or if you want to do this on a Word document, however you're doing it, if you want to draw this diagram, so you've got what happened, why did it happen and were people pleased about the truth. So you're going to be given a number of sources and from the sources you just need to try and take some information to try and fill out parts of this diagram here. So think about each source. What does that source say happened? Does that source say why the Christmas truth has happened? And does the source say about how people are feeling about the truth? Now, for each source there might not necessarily be notes on every single part of this diagram so don't worry if you only get certain parts filled in. Okay so source number one says the power of peace in the time of war the truce in the trenches that brought in the new year and this is a British newspaper that's reporting the truce. So from this what can we take? Well if you look here we've got what happened so from that picture we could see that soldiers were sat beside each other it doesn't mention why did the truce happen, so you'll see that that comes still blank just now. And it says, were people pleased about the truce? And again, we've really only got pictures to go on there, but there are men that are smiling in that picture. So that is source number one. So source number one has been done for you. This is source number two. Now, source number two 
is from General Sir Horace Smith Doran on the 27th of December 1914. Now, this is what he said about the truce. I've shown a report from one section of how on Christmas Day a friendly gathering had taken place of Germans and British on the neutral ground between the two lines, recounting that many officers had taken part in it. This is only illustrative of the apathetic state we are gradually sinking into, apart from also apart also from illustrating that any orders I issue on the subject are useless, for I have issued the strictest orders that on no account is socialising to be allowed between opposing troops. I am calling as to particulars of names of officers and units who took part in this Christmas gathering with a view to disciplinary action. So, he is clearly very much against the truce and what is taking place. He is not happy about the truce. You'll see there he is calling for soldiers to be disciplined, for taking part and officers to be disciplined. He's saying that his orders were not to socialise with the enemy. So, from this source, what information can we take? Well, you'll see here we've added in now. What happened? Well, that source has told, told us that soldiers met between the two lines. Why did it happen? Well, that source has told us that soldiers disobeyed orders and socialised. And the next part, were people pleased about the truce? Again, you have there the second bullet point that higher ranking officers want men disciplined. So, ultimately, that source there shows a negative slant towards the truce. So that is source one and two done for you. So here is source three which is a diary entry from a Belgian soldier. So just what we've done there for Source 1 and 2, you need to do the same for Source 3. So have a look at this and see what does it tell us about the truce. Why did it happen? Does it mention anything on that? And how do people feel about it? You also have Source 4, which is another letter. So again, think about what does this tell us about the truce? Does it mention anything about why it happened? Does it mention how people felt about it? Source 5 you have here. And again, when you're looking at each of these sources, if you just pause it, and you can then fill in your diagram. So again, think about from this source here, what does it tell us about the truce? Does it tell us why the truce happened? Does it tell us how the men involved felt? Again, you've got source six there, which is from a local British newspaper. Again, think about what does it tell you about the truce? Does it mention why it happened? Does it mention how people are feeling? Source number seven, again from another local British newspaper. So again, Exactly the same for this source. Does it tell us what happened? Does it tell us why it happened? Does it say how the men were feeling? And source number eight, you have an interview with Ernie Williams. So again, think about what does Ernie Williams say about the truce? Does he say why it happened? Does he say how people were feeling? Okay, so once you've completed that diagram, I'd like you to compare the primary sources in your list and your diagram there from the advert. So is the advert accurate? Was everyone pleased about the truce. Well already we know from source 2 that no not everyone was pleased about the truce. Yes the advert may appear accurate in terms of it shows the men playing football, it shows the men socialising but it does not show that not everyone was pleased about the truce. So why is the advert controversial? Now Ali Fogg in this article has a number of interesting points that he makes. First one of his points is, so why does the advert leave me feeling so unsettled, so uncomfortable, even a touch nauseous? The first answer has to be that the ultimate objective here is to persuade us to buy our tinsel, our crackers and our sprouts from one particular supermarket. So Ali Fogg is not happy that this advert has been used to encourage people to shop at a supermarket as opposed to me remembering the men of World War One. He also says in the article, exploiting the First World War for commercial gain is tasteless. This however is not what disturbs me most. The really upsetting details are the stunning shot of the robin on the wire. The actor trembles as they cautiously emerge from the trenches, half expecting a sniper's bullet. The flicker of understanding in the eyes as the young soldiers reach into their pockets at the end. The filmmakers here have done something to the First World War which is perhaps the most dangerous and disrespectful act of all. They have made it beautiful. So Ali Fogg's point here is that he feels that the advert has made World War I appear glamorous, appear ultimately like a beautiful thing that took place. Obviously he is disagreeing with that so there's a question here for you to think about do you agree with this source, do you agree with Ali Fogg here? Okay in your last activity to help you to describe the events in a bit more detail and just really go over what happened is to read the document which is the Christmas truce reading task and to answer the questions which are in that document. Remember to answer in full sentences and upload your answer via the assignment tab. So our aims for the lesson, by the end of the lesson, we should now be able to describe the events of the Christmas truce of 1914. You should be able to do that through the questions and through the sources that you've looked at. Analyse how soldiers involved in the Christmas truce would have felt. So again, 
through your diagram where you looked at primary sources, you got some indication of how soldiers who were involved in suits might have felt. And the last point there, to be able to make a judgment about the appropriateness of a source. So how appropriate do you think the advert was?